We now learn how to find, as well as classify, a function's stationary points using the function's derivative. And when I say classify, I mean determine whether or not the stationary point is a maximum, a minimum, or a horizontal point of inflection. Now this tutorial comes in several parts, and in each part we work through an example, the first of which is shown here. We're asked to find and classify any stationary points along the curve defined as y which equals to x squared minus 4x plus 9. Well, to do that, let me start by moving the question to the side. There we go. To answer this question, we're going to follow three steps. The first step, step one, is to find the stationary points. And we do that by solving dy dx equals to zero. So let's get started. We have y, which equals to x squared minus 4x plus 9. And so using the power rule for differentiation, we can differentiate this with respect to x. And we find that dy dx is equal to 2x minus 4. And so to solve dy dx equals to 0 is the same thing as solving 2x minus 4 equals to 0. This leads to 2x equals to 4 which leads to x equals to 4 over 2, in other words, x equals to 2. Now this x equals to 2 tells us that the curve has one stationary point whose x-coordinate is 2. And for the sake of being able to claim that we've actually found the stationary point, we need to calculate its y-coordinate. And for that, we replace every x we see inside our function by the value of x we just found, which was 2. I'll do my working at the bottom here. When x equals to 2, we have y equals to 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 4 times 2 plus 9. That's equal to 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 9. And calculating this from left to right, that's 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, plus 9, which is 5. So y is equal to 5, and we can now state that the stationary point has coordinates 2, 5 and I'll go ahead and box that first result. Okay, now that we have the stationary point, we need to classify it. In other words, we need to figure out if it's a minimum, a maximum, or a horizontal point of inflection. And for that, I move on to step two, in which I use a sign table to study the sign of the derivative dy dx on either side of the stationary point. And here's how I do that. I start by making a row all the way at the top of a table, something looking like this. Now this top row is going to represent the different values of x. Our function, y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 9, is perfectly well defined for all real numbers. And to indicate that, I write that on the top row as follows. I write negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, meaning x can take on all the values between negative and positive infinity. And I now add one last thing on this top row, and that is the value of x at which the derivative was equal to zero. Remember, that was x equals to two. So I write a two somewhere in between negative infinity and positive infinity. I now add columns to my table. The first column I draw right here, right after the x. Done. I then add a bar right below the two, like so, which splits the whole table up into two distinct columns here. Now that that's done, I add a row, and that row is dy dx. There we go. As we just said, when x equals to 2, dy dx, the derivative, equals to 0. So I indicate that in the table by writing 0 on the line below the 2. And now our goal is to figure out whether dy dx is positive or negative on the left-hand side of 2, and positive or negative on the right-hand side of 2. And there are several approaches for doing that, but perhaps the easiest one is to calculate the value of dy dx at any random number to the left of 2. In other words, for any value of x less than 2. So for instance, we could calculate dy dx for x equals to 1, or 0, or negative 2. I'll go ahead and calculate dy dx when x equals to 1. Now when x equals to 1, dy dx, which remember we have right here, I'm boxing in yellow right now, becomes dy dx equals to 2 times 1 minus 4. Calculating that, that's equal to 2 minus 4. Finally, dy dx is equal to negative 2. And what's important about this value, negative 2, is simply that it's negative. 
Indeed, the fact that this is negative allows us to state that dy dx will be negative for all values of x which are less than 2. And I indicate that in our table by writing a minus sign, like so. And to figure out whether or not dy dx is positive or negative when x is greater than 2, we can follow the same approach. All we have to do is calculate dy dx for any value of x greater than 2. So let's go ahead and calculate it for, say, x equals to 3. And I'll do that at the bottom again. When x equals to 3, and I'll just put a line here to separate it from the previous working, dy dx will equal to 2 times 3 minus 4. That's equal to 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 4. That's dy dx equals to 2. And what matters here is that 2 is positive. The fact that this is positive tells us that dy dx will be positive for all x values greater than 2. And I show that in my table by putting a little plus symbol here. Now that we know the sign of this derivative for all x values inside our table, we can move on to step 3. And in step 3, we need to actually analyze the sign of the derivative in order to classify the stationary point. And here's how I like to do it. In this third and final row of our table here, I write y. And this y represents the curve y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 9. Looking at the sign of dy dx for all x values between negative infinity and 2, we can see that dy dx is negative. This means that the curve must be decreasing as we go from left to right. And to illustrate that, I draw an arrow pointing downwards to show that it's going down. When x equals to 2, the curve reaches a stationary point, and we calculated its coordinates in step 1. Remember, those were the coordinates 2, 5. So I write these coordinates in my table at the end of the arrow here. And now for x values greater than 2, we can see that dy dx is positive. This tells us that the curve must be increasing, in other words, going upwards, as we move to the right of the stationary point. And to illustrate that, I draw an arrow pointing upwards. And here's what I like about this sign table. I can see just by looking at these arrows that the stationary point when x equals to 2 is a minimum. Indeed, as we go from negative infinity to 2, the curve is going downwards. It reaches this point, 2, 5, and then shoots back upwards. The stationary point with coordinates 2, 5 must therefore be a minimum. And we can therefore write our final answer. The stationary point with coordinates 2, 5 is a minimum. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could be more specific and state that it's a global minimum, meaning there will be no other point on this curve lower than 2, 5. And if we wanted to, we could convince ourselves of this result by quickly sketching this curve. The curve y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 9 is a parabola looking something like this, with a global minimum point right here, which has coordinates 2, 5. And we can see quite clearly that our sign table indicates exactly what the curve is doing. Indeed, we can see that the curve is going downwards, reaches a global minimum, and shoots right back up, which is exactly what our parabola is doing here. And that's the end of our first example. At this stage, we've learned the method for both finding and classifying stationary points. And in this example, we used the method for a relatively simple function. In the next example, we're going to start looking into more complicated polynomial functions. But we'll still use the same three-step method that we learned here. So let's go right ahead and watch the next tutorial.